in which case Celeste normally goes for the Glimmer Cape to help out with the oh, ulti, or they'll go for a straight BKB or something. Even a Yule Scepter isn't bad uh, for, you know, just having that extra Aww. movement speed and block just fueling away the anti mage. but I don't know. I don't know if it's the... I just don't know how they deal with the Lesh Wreck. And we've seen this before, too, where mm. teams pick up Lesh first, they yep. counter it with an anti mage, and then what do they do? They put Lesh as a support. And then they just pick the, you know, a blood seeker. You could yeah. see like last game and completely destroy the anti mage. Yep. I'd also be really concerned if I'm an anti mage and I can't farm after I get a battle fury. So if no brood mother, brood mama actually run this properly, or sorry, t team YP, uh, run this properly, I'd almost like to see them run something like Undying plus Wyvern as a dual off lane. Really get up in the face of the anti mage. Don't let him farm. And that gives the Lashrak to get all the space. So even if Anime does look like a counter to the Lashrak, until he has something like a mana style and life to survive close range with the Lashrak, he's going to be really quite useless. Yeah, you need that Abyssal Blade to really lock him down and <laughs> just make sure he doesn't get off the BKB or whatever he has. But one good thing is, if Lashrak does cast the BKB and you mana void and he has no mana, it'll hurt everyone around him still. That's not BKB. Uh, so that could be a big play still in itself. Like, as long as Lesh is finding a way to get out of mana, BKB still will not help your allies. Interesting to see the ban out the Storm Spirit here. A bit worried about jumping, but you've got Winter Wyvern. Like, Wyvern is so good against the Storm Spirit. And you only need to, like, pop one of either the Storm or the Animator when they jump in. The Nova will take care of the rest and push the other one back. If he's lost his other core, I would have looked at what's been the more standard po standard pickup with the Tuscar. Uh, instead of the techies actually looking into something like a Dazzle. Here's your combo that you love. It's, man, it's so, it's so solid. It's so solid. And now imagine an anime trying to battle against the Latrak when he's also got a level 4 Iron Shell on himself. Like, that's, that's not a happy anyone, really. I, I I don't care who you are. Then you pick up a Wind Ranger as well. This is yeah, you, this is a very fragile style here. Like it's like she may have a bow and arrow, but she's not agility. Like that's a smart woman right there. That's intelligence ranger. The only good thing you could really say is that anti mage is still good for zoning out darkseer in the early man. stages. If you get the one point mana break, make sure he gets uh, he doesn't get the level two in search. Mm -hmm. uh, zone him out of lane. If you have some good support, um, reserve time. Also, later in the game, Darkseer has a huge mana pool. Sometimes, depending on what he goes, yeah, uh, he could go like a pipe this game, mech pipe, and then the anti mage is kind of screwed because then you don't have that other big mana pool to work off, and the uh, mana void could be useless. So it'd be interesting to see that. But yeah, anti mage is I find really good against that. But yeah, with the Winter's Curse and a Darkseer. Well, a couple with the Leshrac, I don't know. Oh, and going man. back to your Wind Ranger, yeah, it looks like they already have all their cores. Yeah. Are they are they gonna do? So is it gonna be like Tusk support now? Are they gonna run dual offlane? I mean, oh, okay. Team. Uh, they they could rehash the old IG strat, but that completely screws their lanes to do it. We ran a Coddle, Wind Ranger, and Earthshaker. So you'd fissure into power shot into Illumina. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, but the problem now is though that they have Darkseer and Spirit Breaker going in the off lane. Yeah, remaining. both of them. So you might win your off lane, but your anti mage will not get any farm with. So mm -hmm. this is a great pickup that just came in from uh, No Brood Mama side. The only thing I want to see from uh, from Team YP is if they do actually run both Darkseer and Spirit Breaker as that and dual off back. lane. Because if they do that, then Lash pushes to mid, and you've got one more to play up on the top. And then it's got to get up in the face of the anime, it's got to be aggressive with these guys, which is very easy with an SB and Darkseer. But it's along the lines of, they have to be playing in their lanes. If they just pick the heroes up to have a randomly charging Spirit Breaker across the map, to support, and then the Darkseer passively throwing out Iron Shells, they easily lose this game. I can just get caught out. The Spirit Breaker, like Wind Ranger, like I don't care what you gotta do. Yule Scepter on somebody. Bottle can stack and farm inside the jungle. Mana leaking Spirit Breaker as he goes, he'll stun himself out. 
Like there's there's options for root gaming if they if they're allowed to have space. And that's why I think where Team YP really have to make sure that they don't give space to root gaming. Yeah, maybe a Slark pickup be decent for them. For root? For uh, no brew mama. Good. Because like you said, it can as long as you get uh, you know your early Aquila maybe into a Shadow Blade. Um, and you have the Wyvern, Ulti, and Spearbreaker charging the Anti-Mage, it could be easy pickoffs. I would actually try and make things even more complicated and go something like a Phantom Lancer. Yeah, Cause there's, PL's still in the pool. Yeah, because there's, there's no way... I actually would have preferred a PL over on Root Gaming. You talked about that Abyssal Blade. Um, I can't remember exactly who it was that did it, but they ran a BKB as well as Abyssal Blade on the PL as a way to control and kill off the Latrak. And it was mm. really, really, really effective. Because there's no way you can get a proper kill. Spirit Breaker can't charge time. against them. I, I'd actually almost prefer to see Root Gaming do that. Um, but they're going to go a tiny pick up. Zero's great if you can get into the later stages of the game and you're kind of on equal footing with the Anti-Mage because Craggy is the most obnoxious thing you're playing against and mm. Anti-Mage has to go BKB. And normally yeah. when you're playing Anti-Mage, you don't want to be forced into it. And this game with Spirit Breaker, Tiny, all these heroes, you actually have to get... Yeah, with, and, with Spirit Breaker especially, like, that guy doesn't yeah. care about magic immunity, be it ulti or be it just his 17%. So, battling up against one-on-one, Tiny is really hard in the later stages of the game, and it can go for that quick blink dagger too. It can apply a lot of pressure, it can kill, um, it could kill probably the next support that's coming up. I, I'm not too sure what route want to go here. There's, I'm actually thinking Lion is like, what, Lion or Rubik are like the like, only ones they can go for. And I'm I thinking think CM, I'm, but I don't want to see a CM. Uh, she'll like, she'll die too easily in this game. I know, but it's like it helps for the dark seer. But you, you, you need you need disable, yeah. and you need some kind of burst damage. So if someone gets cold embrace, you can kill him. Disruptor. Disruptor will be fine, um, but he's not that great against the spirit breaker. Like yeah, the controls it's not are good instant. early. You're just gonna get rolled over early. Yeah, that's why. It, it really looks like that. Like I, I'm really actually hoping this dark seer and spirit breaker. Let's get up in the face of Root Gaming. The Keeper of the Light is one of the worst heroes you can have in the early game. Like, you can illuminate spam spare map, but level 1 against weaker supports would be okay. Five against a Spirit Breaker or a Darkseer, these guys won't even care. And they do actually go for the Rubik, so they are looking for that instant control on somebody. And maybe he can get lucky and steal Curse, or yeah. some something else. Like, maybe even Lashrax Lightning would be nice. I'm trying to think, yeah, Lesh, Lesh's Lightning or Stun or just Curse. I see his Iron uh, Shells, Avalanche, Toss, Spirit Breaker Charge isn't great, but it's for repositioning. It's actually really hard to spirit, uh, steal Spirit Breaker Charge if that's a good Spirit Breaker player, too, because normally he'll cast Charge and then Empowering Haste. But it, if, if you... Oh, yeah, you're right, because it's, it's, it's just like Witch Doctor, made, isn't it? Too. And, uh, and I steal Empowering Oh crap! <laughs> I just messed up. But, uh, well, so you I, I, I find that amusing, considering I was casting Southeast Asian Dota about two weeks ago, and this Rubik kept getting charged. So he, <laughs> that, he he yeah, would he would Spear Breaker was playing it wrong. He was charging in and then just telekinesis. Probably <laughs> initiate. Think about that because you don't normally think of the abilities where you go. Oh yeah, Spirit Breaker's got that. As far as like an activatable. Yeah. W once I I played support, I learned a lot of these things yeah. that I had no idea about, and kind of opened up things like things. Rubik's a really fun hero. I, I love watching Rubik's. Yeah, if, if they can get the timing right and positioning right, it's gonna be great. Rubik's probably biggest enemy in this game is gonna be Fog of War. Because yeah. if if and he can't see it coming, he can't get the grab. Also, yeah, Lesh, I just feel like Lesh is just going to be able to chase him down. It's going to be depending on Lesh, yeah, and Spear Breaker. It's, it's so many heroes that can just, you know, run at you really easily. Um, I'm favoring, really favoring Dyer's lineup. Yeah, well, the, the lineup just looks really easy to execute as well. Like, um, what's the real challenge in this lineup? Like, I and Shell, I farm. charge in. Yeah, getting Tiny Farm is going to be the challenge, but if you look at the offlaner of Root, you're running a Tusker. At least that's What if they did? What if they do this? 
<laughs> no, that's getting crazy. <laughs> okay. I was saying they have to go. I got this really brilliant idea that maybe no, no, it's complete balls. Them. It's crap. Flush it down the daddy. I don't know. They might be forced to dodge. Yeah. Or, or try to dodge. BD or Brew Mama's dual lane because I don't know if they can win. Be very interesting. Well, that's a really sad timing for uh, Oscar. He got scouted out by the Spirit Breaker. I'm fairly certain. So because of that, this uh, this observer and sentry, the ping came out from Wyvern saying, I'm almost 100% certain they are right there. So, yep. I wonder if uh, they're going aggro. I think MBM? They don't, yeah, yeah. they don't need to. Like, There's no pressure on them to do so. You run a Wyvern support that harasses out the Tuscar, you get grab tons of farm on your Tiny, who could even probably even go ahead and bite us if he wants to. Maybe he's feeling that confident. Um, and then you just run your Darkseer Spirit Breaker off lane and let, like, let the Spirit Breaker run off and charge the mid or get an aggressive ward down in the Radiant Jungle so then he can charge into the jungle with an Iron Shell on him. Basically, almost guaranteed first blood if you can catch the Keeper of the Light out. I'm assuming Sunken's going to run back to the Tier 2 tower and then charge the first hero that MBM sees. Right. Okay, that's... That, that's that's my assumption in this case. If they are running a spirit break at top, the aggro tri lane has to be like th then you actually push l l what lash into a support role. I don't know. Darkseer would be like, or but I don't think it's gonna happen. It's just I'm curious to see what Root do with their lanes. Like maybe the only thing, the only reason why you do this. Is you go if you want to go aggro with the tiny, is that you think the enemy team is going aggro with like the anti mage and they're dodging me. So, kind of like a musical chairs that could, could occur in this game. Uh huh. But it, it really I'm doesn't not, look like it, man. Yeah, I don't think it's going to. Um, like, I'm actually thinking this is just a warning mission, that's all. But they've only right. got two sentries on the heroes who are down on bot lane. The other observer was, in fact, still inside the, uh, the Spirit Breaker stash. So he's got to come down to the bot lane. Do this for Team YP. Then they just want vision. Like if, if you can just see the Keeper of the Light pulling, charge over, you get yourself a kill. Wonderful. Then you move on to your next target. But with his charge line, he's got to move back to the Tier 2 tower, or else he's going to get scattered out by everything. And like run in front of the Tier 1. So they see the Animage. Uh, charge didn't come in time. They might see more. Yep, now they see the Wind Ranger. The Keeper of the Light is the easiest target. In fact, yep, here comes your charge. It's going on monkeys. It's not going to come in range of that T1 tower. In fact, if we look at the Radiant Vision, okay, now they see the Spirit Breaker charging in. They realize it, and it's going to push monkeys in. And they've got to get the follow up stun. Lashrak will connect on that one. Wind Run's only going to protect him for a while. The Iron Shell doesn't come up in time. Now, this is the time for sh for uh, for Sunken to get that Ob's Ward down. And where are they Still going? Still a good play. Forced out Wind Ranger getting into a Wind Run early on, so mm -hmm. uh, that helps for mid lane a bit because now she can't power shot to harass or take seat. I think it's really good. Just means she'll have to be a little bit more aggressive with physical attacks. Mm. Physical <laughs> against Lesh is so scary though. Yeah. Like, like what do you, you want to do? Well, I'll, I'll pop Wind Run to dodge lightning. Oh crap. <laughs> but then again, Lashrak also got stunned first, he didn't get lightning first. He obviously tried to get that follow-up done in Spirit Breaker Charge. It was successful. No one else from from uh, from YP was close enough for it. But they're, they're both actually crippled at this level one. Whoa. Watching this this mid now because we're talking about it. <laughs> but I'm gonna go bottom lane here a little bit. They did get the ward blocked, and Derp does have a sentry ward. Is he gonna find it though? Question. No, no, just gonna be. Okay, mm -hmm. well, if, if Derp Derp watches Sunken nice and close... Okay, there's no 17% for Sunken, so he's got to do this the old-fashioned way, but with the Orb of Venom over on Sunken, he can actually solo up the Rubik here. Like, you're, you're tangoing up a little bit, but at the same time... Yeah, yeah, he's, he's walking all the way back to the Keeper of the Light. Not gonna man mode this out. But this this stops the uh, the stacking for the Keeper of the Light. This is the easiest camp for the Keeper of the Light to stack. And they're gonna sentry it up now. Have yeah, but now minutes. they have no pools, though. 
Oh, true, because the the, the dire sentry ward's already down. All right, this is this is problematic. And then she see we're keeping the light level to start with. He actually can't flash farm inside the jungle because he went mana leak. But you were talking about it before with the anti mage going for that one point of a mana break. They're actually going to drain oh. the Darkseer out. He knows he can't keep walking until now this. So starts the surge, runs away, the pick up and toss back means he's got no way to really escape from this. They need a little bit more damage to find the kill. The blink is still on cooldown for the AM and the charge is coming in from the Spirit Breaker. It's going to push back the Keeper of the Light. Not too far because there's still no bash on the Spirit Breaker and they're going to cut through the trees and run away. It at least saves First Blood being given over to Root Gaming. Oh, well, I assume. It's a haste uh, rune. That's that is unfortunate. Oh, the pickup! Oh. He can put him on the cliff. Oh. He didn't put him on the cliff. Oh, okay. Jaw could be in trouble now. If he just goes back and attacks Jaw. Yeah. Oh. He'll boy. find him. He knows there's no telekinesis. He really needs that 17 percent. Like it would be so much better for him if he had 17 percent. <laughs> Uh, kind of weird though, seeing Spirit Breaker just going to the jungle. I kind of I think he did the right play in walking off the camp there, but then maybe spending too much time, and it's kind of hurting. Darkseer might be level three, but yeah, like we said, Spirit Breaker could be level two, and he could be bashing and helping out. Mm -hmm. Darkseer's throw back. They've still got Mana Link, so it's going to get the instant stun over on the Darkseer. He's got enough money; he can complete up his entire Soul Ring right now. So, Darkseer is okay. They still can't find the kill, and the amount of committed time from Keep Alive as well as Rubik down here is a big concern for me for Root Gaming. They These supports really need levels, and they're not getting anything right now. I would say definitely Root are coming out. Eh. I, nah, I want to say behind. Definitely not better. Like, you, you got a Latrak who's farming up. Yes, it's equal to the Wind Ranger, but I'm more worried about a Latrak than I am a Wind Ranger. And you've still got this really tanky combo from MBM, which run the off lane with a soul ring, so they've got never ending mana. Tiny is, is actually neck and neck with the Tuska, that's it. The Tuska is getting a lot of levels, though, and that's their playmaker. So we're going to be looking at him a lot this game and seeing when he does, as well as he's forever. Seeing if he gets some shackle shots. Look at Monkey's Forever build. He's got nothing in shackle. Pretty interesting. He's trying to harass out the Latrak out of the lane, but the problem is Latrak's running a bottle. That harass won't work. Well, looks like Derp Derp's got another little chance at the moment. You still don't have that second level over on Sunka, but you don't... Okay, you have a second level on Keeper of the Light, but he went for Chakra, as opposed to going in for, uh, for the Illuminant. So he's still got no lane presence at all beyond the Mana Drain. Which is good up against a Darkseer. I think this man leak is really good. It's just the problem is, yeah, they have no pools, so it's really hard for them to get back in the levels. Maybe that's why. Maybe if they had the pools to work with, he would have got blast. So, changing up during the game seems pretty good. In that mid lane, Latrak's keeping too. his distance here. He's gonna lightning farm up the lane. Oh, actually, okay, he's, he's, gonna gonna he's just gonna miss the CS instead. <laughs> uh, all three of them underneath the tower. The, right, light, the lightning would have taken almost all of that. Would have. We've gotten them all. Yep. But he might be worried about Matt. Okay, now he's gonna see the Tusker. Actually, does his vision cut up that high? No, it doesn't. That Tusker is still staying perfectly out of vision. But he's been waiting here for the last minute. Try and gank up onto 11. And he just hasn't found the opening, which means now Tiny does. And he is actually going, oh, oh come on, Tiny. Are you thinking Midas? Yeah, yeah, I really want to see Tiny with the Midas. So I thought in this game, this would be the perfect game. Like, you give him, give him Midas. Pair a couple of sacks in the jungle, and you just flash farm him into a point where he's such a quick fighter. And and you can go for things like that blink dagger directly after it. And still you know you can get into your bigger item after that. The problem with that is you kind of need like an arcane boots person team or something. Else he's not going to have enough mana or a wisp. So it's True. really hard to go ink greedier builds when you don't have like a wisp or some mana help. Game. I'd just be curious to see if he even goes back for a bottle or anything, because yeah, the one big problem with Tiny is you always have to work with your mana, and yep. how do you solve it? Oh, 
Oscar, this should, this should this should be first blood. He's gonna snowball, but uh, Spirit Breaker is ready to charge in. And here he comes. He's got his uh his level two, so he's finally got the seventeen percent. Uh, Latrak will take the first blood, committing almost all of his mana pool. But having that haste stream, there was no running for the Tusker, and he knew it. So first blood to goes to Team Breaker. Get uh, hmm? the the assist though. <laughs> <laughs> he let him have levels. That's that. You should be happy with that. Almost level three on this Spirit Breaker. He can afford himself something. Did he actually buy that Stout Shield now? So. You can have it at the beginning of the game. Okay, because because the courier flew something in. I'm like, okay, what would you be picking up now? Like, you think movement speed is kind of like the bread and butter of a spirit breaker. So even even if you go to pick up boots this early on, you've got so much strength and armor that having just the double gauntlets is fine. And he was gonna he just sold his branch, and I thought he was gonna pick up boots. Instead, he picked up TP and sentries. That's like full support. Yeah, that's not what I was expecting. Like, oh, boot, boots are so good. Yeah, this is a little bit trial for Darks here. He went a level one up in VAC as well. Soldier's gonna come off cool. He's got four wand charges. Gonna trigger him, but the damage is enough from Keeper of the Light. Discharge in from Spirit Breaker will also Stop be lane. very unsuccessful. Oh, nice avalanche. And the toss. Damage is enough. Finds the kill. Combo. I think he was. Oh, Spirit Breaker. Uh Battle leak again. It just keeps going. Spirit Breaker's gonna stand here and tank it. Like they, they, they're not really hurting too hard. Charges through, knocks back the AM quickly. But now Darks here tries to find interruption, backing them back in to the Iron Shell. But the Mana Void's still gonna be there. Dirt Step's gonna burn underneath that level two Iron Shell. But it's still only level two. He went the second point up in Surge, and he cannot move until that Surge is off cooldown. In fact, he surges through the melee creep, the one melee creep that had the Iron Shell on it. So the creep wave will continue to push quite hard. Didn't find the Keeper of the Light who TP'd back to base. Pretty good play. Coming in from Keeper, just TPing out there. And uh, I would say definitely it's working out for Anti-Mage favor though. He just got another, he got a kill. He might not be farming as well as the Tiny, but still, they're giving him a lot of space. Okay. <laughs> You're too deep, Duncan. You're too deep. Wow. Get out, man. He's gonna TP, but there's a telekinesis, he's gonna go down! <laughs> the second you realize that Monkeys is back past this point, and that he's still got Windrun available, you cannot go that deep. It was meant to be a combo with a split hurt, but it went horribly, horribly wrong. That was... That was too much of a man for even my... That was suicidal is what it was. Wishful... 17%. Hoping for like six hits in a row or Man, something. It's, it's not even seventeen percent. It's assuming that root gaming supports won't have TPs. Like that, that's the only way that that would have worked. Right now, root is perfectly set up for the top lane. They initiate him. The spirit breaker may arrive, but then again, you've got the throw around and tiny. He does tie the Manic league helping with it, but it's actually Rubik that did the work. And well, the strike will come in. Looks for the stun. Picks it up. One burst, the pulse nova is gonna be enough. And now Spirit Breaker to charge and again the lining will slow down Derp Derp enough. Wait, did he actually pull back out of it? Yeah, he did. He's taking too much damage from the tower. And again, the track will allow the pulse nova to finish the job. Good rotation. Bottom lane is going on Darks here. Blinked up for. Mm hmm. Okay. Mana is big enough for the Darks here. You could potentially find a kill. Even with the level one mana void. He's like it. Darkseer Iron Shell Dancing Mage. What's he, what's he supposed to do then? Stay away from his own creep wave? <laughs> oh, this Dancing Mage though should be feeling really good. Like, he's got 43 CS, a decent amount of denies, the highest on the board. His net worth isn't that bad. Found a kill and a, an assist. He's already picked up Treads, Quality Blade, and a Ring of Health. So he's got enough life to survive the harassment of the Iron Shells. Which yeah, won't be good. coming all the time, obviously. Yeah, they've been zoning out Darkseid really well. And he has the Ring of Health. He's been working with it nicely. And I think he has enough. Monkeys. He has the line. He had the line for a moment. Now he's going to start attacking. Don't walk towards the trees. The trees are not your friends. Ivan going to cold embrace. They pick him up. Dup, dup. Also, and cows are not his friends. The Wyvern's still going to go down. And this charge actually moves on to a creep as opposed to over to the Wind Ranger. And ends up being a one-for-one -one trade as Rubik overstays his welcome. 
So far, I would say both teams playing really well. Just getting really aggressive. Sunken might be uh, a little bit headstrong here, but looking at Tiny up top here, we have drums being completed, so he's going to go for that mid-game aggression. I wonder if he's going to go back for... Kind of weird not seeing even a magic wand on him. I think he should pick that up. That's, that's really key. Need to have it. There's a lot of spells being cast on the enemy team. Yeah. Oh, support teeping fights. bottom. They just brought the track down here. He's got one point up in Edict and 10, 10 levels. And with the Arcane Boots, they can push pretty quickly. Giving monkeys forever free farm mid, though. Oh, uh, the level's coming back. Uh, it's, it's, Sunken? They actually surged him in. Uh, they actually surged the try to get closer towards monkeys, but monkeys backed up. And you're right, that TP back out makes it easy for Spirit Breaker to escape. But here comes the charge again. Still only one point up in charge, he decided to go for the three points up in the Greater Bash instead. Mm, there's no wall. If they had wall plus curse, they could maybe burn all his mana. We'll uh, see. We've got curse at least. I think it it could have been enough, but he wisely... I don't know if that playing. They're actually having another go. Oh, it looks like Tiny is surviving through a lot. <laughs> but he'll eventually die. And this is the ticket now for, for YP to attack on the bot lane. You have Wind Ranger who's rotated in to try and stop this. He's got his own Blink Dagger up. Dire Observer Ward doesn't see him in the trees. And that's what they're hoping for. They just hope, yeah, for exactly that. Now, you could open up. They don't want to get too close, however. But they can still perfectly see monkeys. Fresh Iron Shell for the Spirit Breaker. Not charging in yet. So close to level 11, too. I don't know if it's really going to help him. Like, the, the blink tag is going to be his saving grace, but they've got to start with curse. That's that's the best way YT can stop this. You just curse, charge him with a spirit breaker, and beat the crap out of the Wind Ranger. That's that's the goal, but now he blinks away and so does the anti-mage. The, the ward spotted out the TP rotation coming in from the tiny. They got smoke for it, but they out. move up into it! They break the smoke of the Winter Wyvern! Gypsy will cut through the trees and breaks the smoke on the other two. Oh, he's coming in, monkeys! Didn't he see? Uh, he, they saw. Vision was granted. Radiance bottom. Thought that they were probably going to the right. I have no idea. And then all of a sudden, Tiny comes out and rocks his world. But um, but um, but um, but um. That goes your bottom tower. Wind Ranger down now. The little track is the top net worth on the field. He'll complete up now his soul booster. Inching closer towards having that full bloodstone. And they're gonna eat it through the tower. There's fortification available, which has failed to be used. So, Root not slowing down. Uh, uh, like, every second counts. Every second counts in this game. This animation needs every moment he can get. If, if you're, like, on equal footing with farm, like, if Anti-Mage and Tiny are equal, I'll hold that. Uh, Wyvern. Nice Blink Shackle. Monkey's just found the angle. He's going to power shop through it into Wyvern. Why did he stop attacking? I don't know. That was really weird. Uh, he probably just assumed that the Cold Embrace would be coming instead. Uh, let the Illuminate finish the job. Now, well, nice little Blink back, evading the Avalanche. Let's rank once have a crack of this. The Lightning going to protect him in a nice Illuminate. <gasps> catching out, and with a double shackle from Monkey, deep in the power shot, hitting the Spirit Breaker in the back lines, and the Mana Void from Annie Mage. Oh, you pawn. Maybe we're a little bit premature with how good they would be after their leading phase. Now they'll lose their tier one tower and a heavy fight on top. Did, however, grant the bottom tower their way. Yeah, they got a little bit too antsy there for their first time, Toby. I don't, I don't know, man. That first group up is always the most crucial when you're playing, and that just gave Anti Mage his full battle fury. Ay, ay, ay. Now you're on the back foot. I was talking how equal farm. <laughs> Tiny can definitely go toe to toe with Anti Mage, but he gets off to this quick start. He starts laying in these huge mana voids. Oh boy. Yep. Life has just gotten so hard. And the Battle Fury wanted exactly that. Like, he, he, like, sorry, the Gypsy wanted exactly that. The Battle Fury. So early on, it was a free ticket to his Battle Fury. 15 minutes, you managed to go Battle Fury as well as Treads. You're rushing it as well. 
So the chance of you having a favorable fight with an Animage in it is very, very low. But he found the perfect scenario. And now could just move himself he can move himself out of the dire jungle when he feels ready for it all. Uh, for now, he's actually moving in deeper into the dire jungle to keep this farm up. A little overconfidence, I, you prefer to have something like a Vladimir's before you attempt this. As, yeah, Spirit Breaker, you're not going in on that. It'd be interesting to see. I mean, Lesh, if he could have had, good thing the Lesh didn't die there with his Bloodstone. He's going to have that completed now. That can help them back into the game. Uh, I'm curious to see what Tiny's still going for. He still hasn't got a magic wand. I, I'm definitely going to call him out on not going for that. It's he's going he's to he's put the money into the Blink Dagger, man. He's going for the he's going for the fight belt. He's going for the drums and treads. He needs to have that Blink Dagger. Been, been, just been picked off like too many times in the top lane on his own. Well, this time he's really not alone. Him. This this time, NYT are going to come together. And they'll come up for the tier 1 tower, and they do find the Keeper of the Light. The charge is coming in the back. One quick Illumina is not going to do much, so the Keeper of the Light dies to a big smoke. But you're just going to go for the opposite now, if you're root gaming. You manage to find a double damage rune over on the Wind Ranger. You take the tier 1 tower in the bottom lane in trade for the top tier 1 tower. The Lashrank just had the Bloodstone, but you just don't want to fight this if you're root gaming. Just keep farming up, don't get involved. Get that Vladimir's over on your anti-mage. Let your tier 1 and tier 2 towers drop, not a problem. It's only a problem if, if uh, Team YT try and push up to the tier 3 tower. Yeah, if they keep going, then they'll force back. That's what they should do. And then you may have found the stack. Three or four people TP back to the top lane. And then you may have found the, the ancient stack of the Dire side. Good play. Although, it might not be good play yeah. if they all get hit by this blast. Yeah, level 4 Illumina is like such a great defense. This and is where the they start back. Support did come in. The shards aren't going to catch on anyone. They managed to retreat in time. But that full Vlad's is now done for the Animage practically. Like, give him this camp and he's good. We'll give him that bounty rune and he's good. Oh, monkey's going for a shackle. Wait, he actually. That's so tanky. No, he, he can't. He can't, he can't oh. kill a Shrak, man. Like, maybe when he's got the Agonim Scepter, I will agree. I thought it was an anti mage behind him, but it was just Shackle, a Shackle the Spirit Breaker. Oh, okay. Why not both? The stun actually hit the Lashrak as well, so we couldn't follow up with a Split Earth. And Charge was stolen by the Rubik. We talked about this. He's actually going to get interrupted by the Darkseer. The Fade Bolt will remove a little bit of life, but they're coming in for another Charge, and that Blink Dagger is up for the Tiny. They end up killing off the Rubik, but it's the first reveal of that Blink Dagger. I actually feel it's confident like they're they... for Roche. No, they can't do Roche. They don't have the damage required. I I know. That's why I'm like they just like huddled there though for five seconds. The power shot's trying to have a look to see, but like this is this is time wasted. Like you, you huddle for five, ten seconds, the anti mage has farmed up half of his Yasha now. That's that's why you can't have indecision like this. You have to not have indecision. <laughs> oh, welcome every, welcome every to the Mr. Obvious now, Hour. I'm your host, Mr. Bloody Obvious. <laughs> Let's go straight to the bones. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Say obvious stuff too. Fine. Mr. Obvious. Times. Dark's here, though. He's been completely shut down. 20 minute mechanism? That's not that great of a timing. Normally, you. Try to get it by the 14 minute mark, group up some towers. But the good thing is, they already have four towers, so not even lacking the uh, like he's not lacking the tower gold, he's lacking the farm. He only has 44 CS, they're not helping them out early game. That's a fast blink dagger. Oh, you you called him, man. You said this tusk guy he's getting levels, and now he's found farm to be that playmaker for root gaming. And they not only have him, like, having the Wind Ranger with the Blink Dagger and the Tuscar with the Blink Dagger. Like, you got Get Out Jar free cards. You've got Arcane Boots Galore. Dup, 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 dup. He's, 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 not, he's not granting Monkeys anything. Monkeys has a bottle. He's not going to waste his Arcane Boots. <laughs> it looks like they're grouping up for a smoke, but it's kind of the worst time for it because Darkseid had just completed a mech. Boots of Travel. Being picked up on Lesh, she's gonna maybe go for those split pickoffs or split push. I agree, it needs to be picked up. I don't know if it needed to be picked up now. Maybe I would like to see a Glimmer Cape first. 
There's still a lot of magic damage coming in from the food side. This is the indecision we were talking about. Again, they have the they have the medallion of courage. But the, the, that's not going to help them. They don't have damage output. It's like yeah. it's like one of Lashrak's only weaknesses is killing off Roshan. Like, it's just not great. You got a lot of survivability, but uh, you could tank all you want. There's a reason why whenever you play up against bosses, you have your tank, you have your medic, and you have your damage dealers. These are three critical areas you work together with. And they just don't have, like, half these areas. The power shot reveal what they're doing, and they might just get scared off. Animesh doesn't care. He's taking that tier 2 tower. And even if you do get the Aegis the Immortal into, into YT, I don't know if they can really utilize it. Like, you have to force high ground. Like, that's the only way you're really going to make the most out of this. Power shot in, and, uh, well, Lashrak will get the Aegis the Immortal. Because uh, right now, I just feel like Root Gaming's going to split push them. And most of this time of the Aegis is going to be completely wasted. Yeah, I agree that most of the time should be wasted, and they might do a best anti-mage, might get one tower, and they might get a tower. It's, it's kind of like we're kind of trying to get enough space for our Ag's Tiny to catch back up. Because right now, he should probably be a thousand gold away, but since he got picked off all those times, he got set back, couldn't get that fast blink dagger, mm -hmm. and he couldn't get those pickoffs. So now they're trying to make some ketchup, and <laughs> their way of ketchup is just by doing that Roshan right there. Right. You see just how many, like, things Gypsy gives. Uh, yep. Because he, he was looking at the Latrak, it's like, oh, I'm just going to finish farming. Like, he knows he can blink himself away before anyone's going to arrive. He's got two Observer Wards inside the Dire Jungle, so he knows the second YT rotate anyone, anyone in. And the second they do, they buy space for, aka okay, Wind Ranger, to finish up her full Aghanim Scepter and add pressure to the bottom lane. Even Rubik has level 8 at this point. Tuskar's managed to find a whole bunch of levels. Like, you, you've managed to get a lot across all of your team. Oh, why are you chasing shadows across the map? Yeah, even looking at Jaw here playing the Coddle, he's a thousand gold away from his eggs. And we know how much work uh, the Mana League's been doing. And mm -hmm. just to have these blinding lights, that's a great counter for Tiny. He attacks really slow, and just imagine if he misses one attack, yep. he's screwed. It's also that, that split push enabler. Uh, that's what Keeper of the Light was like originally coming back into the meta about six months ago for was the fact that you could you, you could always just recall. Gotta right. love me the calls. Yeah, they're, they're so easy. Like you could you could turn any hero into Spectre. You're basically farming up the side lanes, and you don't even need an ultimate to drag you back into the fight. That's just how good it is. Ah, uh, Lash. Yeah. Rock, hard place, hard place rock, um, meet uh, each other, and uh, Tuskar actually gets really scared and runs away to the corner. <laughs> They're all gonna TP back out again. They were all like, oh, where's everyone at? Where's everyone at? So much indecision right there. Kinda paid off. Kinda of funny rude, too that uh, Keeper of the Light was in ultimate form, but uh, still the animation TP'd back. Not perfectly. So I, I'm, I'm actually a stickler for this kind of stuff, primarily because I played a lot of Keeper of the Light. Um, so when you when you have your Ags ulti and you see a teammate waste a hundred gold, it's like it doesn't have to be this way. Hey, it, it it could be better. I, I kind of lied. Jaw had the eggs even sooner, and now it's daytime. This is great timing for them. They kind of they have the anti mage with the. Mid, they're coming so to mid. This is as strong as they want to go on the wind range up. They'll toss her off the life. How much is available when they got the curse? Not enough life is available. The run back out. The Illumin's gonna come in. The shards gonna actually hit into a couple. Just trying to split it around you. Yeah, you don't need to commit your Nether Strike for that kill. The Rubik's just gonna die. But meanwhile on top lane, Gypsy strikes again, and we will have to have. Yep, there's our recall in. Four seconds, which can bring the AM back if they require it. The Manda Illusions push into the tower, and in fact, Tiny, the recall started. Anyways, could kill him. If no, he's getting charged. This, okay. is, this is the most annoying thing to play against as a Spear Breaker with charge. Anti Mage. He's got Blink in one second again, oh, so he's gonna. He got away. And they're recalling. They're gonna use They're gonna recall. <gasps> Okay, the Spirit Breaker should be really happy that Nether Strike is not like it used one. to be. Hmm? Charge is level 1. 
Yeah, I know. Use empowering haste. I don't think he knows you can use empowering haste. Is that interrupting his chat? I don't know, man. It doesn't. Uh, it does a little bit. I don't know. I'm just saying I don't know why he's not doing it. Not, not to the, not to your your statement about mechanics because you're 100 percent right. Yeah. Oh, I know, I avalanche. Know so much. No, no mana for a toss. Spirit breaker. He's got his ulti and now going to bring down the Tusker. Meanwhile, on bottom lane, Gypsy continues to harass into the tier three tower and force rotations back. Kind of worried for this anti-mate. It's kind of like all on him right now because. Right now, Monkeys has hit landed some great shackle shots this game, but he hasn't really progressed. He still only has an axe. He doesn't have any DPS items. He's two and two. He's made some plays, but he's not making the plays in the mid game. You saw him kind of die there in the mid tower, so kind of setting him back a little bit. He needs to be the other carry this game because Anti Mage cannot do it alone this game, mm -hmm. going against a Lesh and a Tiny. Look at this setup right now from from Kengen. He's trying to get around so he can uh, get the curse over on Gypsy. And then... Gosh, oh, oh, he actually accidentally attacked. He came out of the Invis rune. <laughs> He'll move into the Glimmer. And then just TP out. But he was hoping to catch the Animage low. But then the Spirit Breaker would charge in. And then they would curse and kill. That was... That was set mindset. At least the Tier 2 Town's not going to go the way of YT. Uh, they're losing their creep wave and with fortification. I feel like they need to back up. Man, if I was this anti mage, I wouldn't be concerned. Like, you're getting pushed, but it's nowhere near the level that you're in trouble. Rubik, fuck a ball. Comes over the tree lines, gonna be sunk, and now Tiny comes in for the avalanche toss. Dies very, very quickly, but the snowball's gonna fall up into Sunken, and the anti mage came in as well. So they burn off most of the mana. The aluminum from Keeper of the Light actually ensures the kill. Just before we hit the night time. So they did get healed up a little bit as well. But a spirit breaker for a Rubik. That's not really the trade off you're searching for. They get the tier 2 tower, and then they did acquire the eggs now on tinies. I would say it's, it's about even a little bit there. Mm. But the, the, the timing is good for them. I'll definitely agree with that. In fact, they can, they can get items like that, eggs, and now blink dagger for the darks here. And they're, they're getting items where they can actually make plays. And they could be what we were hoping they would be from the very, very start. Up in the face of Root and with advantage. Because of that double kill on top lane, kind of threw everything into absolute turmoil. Oh yeah, that, that first team fight gave Anti-Mage all the space he needed in the world to get far ahead. But that's just keeping up with them amazingly. They're charging down. Chips gonna, gonna have to get recalled like right now if he's gonna survive. Actually, no, they got a lot of support behind him. Chipsy will blink himself away, and Sunken just pulls out when he hits when he hits the creep wave. I'm not agreeing with the spear breaker build. You normally want to max the charge. charge. Yeah. Because then it gives you the yeah. It's just taking him so long to just transverse the map. It just seems so weird too that you'd uh. That you go in for four points up in empowering haste. Bonus move speed's good, but over the charge speed increase, and then yeah. your stun duration as well. Like you're sitting at a at a half, like half of what the stun could be. Like you're one point two instead of the two point four for your charge stun. That's another great point. Oh, point of spear breaker is to be permanently stunned. Mhm. Mm That's why we always cry out seventeen percent. Because he's just able to lock down heroes in, again, what we do require, what we describe as a perma bash. Just More that good. broken than void. Get a Lincoln Sphere now on Lashrak. Really good. I, I love when teams either go Lincoln's or Lotus Orb against Anti Mage. Because sometimes you'll catch the enemy team off guard, they'll get maybe a good Don't mana void in their hair, and it'll be either blocked or reflected. So. This game, I guess you could say, better go for the, the Lincolns first because it gives you more mana regen. Lotus Orb doesn't really work on him. Darkseer could go for that, but you might need to get like a sheep stick on him to eat. But yeah. you might need to get a sheep stick on him to catch out the anti mage. You're still having a little bit of lockdown problems. Oh, look. I, I can understand the point of the Lincoln Sphere. At the same time, 
Like, I, I'm, I'm thinking more about not dealing with the enemies when you find him, but forcing the enemies to come to you. Which means you have to have the ability to get up onto, uh, up into the tier 3 tower, into the base of Root Gaming, if you're going to come out on top. But you're going to need something more like Sheepers Guard or something along those lines in order to do such a thing. I think they can go high ground if they have Ags, Tiny, AC, and uh, an Aegis on them. Like, that could be kind of a really good point. And then if Root ever try to come on them, then you have the Dark Seer combo with the Wyvern. So I think it's I think it's really hard for NBM, or no, Root, to go high ground on them. They kind of just need to, like, end the team fight or a split push, and then hopefully Anti-Mage can get a, a Rex. And speaking of AM, he had to go this. Oh, he's going to find out. Tonight. Into the BKB. Yeah, as you, as you said, like, Crankly is, is a nightmare. The question is, where does he go now? I think probably still has to be a pistol. So lock down these heroes. Pistol makes sense. Either that or he just tries to tank through, realizing that if he can survive the in initial damage, then he's good. So you could look into something more like an armor base or just pure life with a heart. Uh, Avalanche, Toss, and Tusker. He'll make it work for it. Gonna snowball, and then... No. Uh, he didn't blink. No, he didn't. <laughs> he had a lot of cooldown as he came out of the snowball. It was. Could have escaped. Okay, we're back to the we're back to the same situation. This time you do at least have an Aghanim's over on the tiny. The damage is better, but Root are not giving this to them. The Tusk are still a long way away with no buyback available. With four heroes coming in, remember you've still got Illuminate, and blinding light's a real problem when you're inside the Roche pit, because you could find yourself on either side of the wall when you get bounced back. It's all about the combo. In their YP, can they pull off the Winter's Curse with the Darks here? Is that Coddle? Yeah, I'm glad he moved to this position. This, this is the place you want to be as a Keeper of the Light. Like, just inside this camp. There's no way you can go for Roshan when this is happening. I'm also surprised the Animage came back as quickly as he did. Gypsy could have easily set on that top lane a lot longer, and then they just used Illuminate and Power Shot to deter uh, YT from taking Roshan. I agree. He did come back a little bit too early. I guess they thought he was going to die faster. Because normally that's what happens when people go for Roche. It yeah. ends up dying uh, so quickly. But, but the know, damage like output of, of, of YT just isn't isn't that at all. Get a blink dagger coddle. Alright, well, screw the four stops. He's just going blink. It's not, a, it's not a bad thing to have. Like, you can force Spirit Breaker to maybe reposition himself. If the tiny blinks in, you're quick enough. Maybe you can blink away in time. Blink into a blinding light. You're always in the middle of the team fight. Oh yeah, that blinding light. Pretty good. Yeah. And oh, the vacuum mist there. But it would only cost the dusk. Do they even have a gem? Any dust? The answer no, is no, no and no. Centuries. They had the one there's sentry ward which was down the river, but they don't see anything more than that. And root on fighting them. They don't need to. And that's still. It's, it's going to be a butterfly build, by the way, for uh, the enemy. He's got a. He's got a quarter staff in his stash. But I, I, I'm still surprised that Root are uh, committing as many heroes as they are. Their vision is watching the movement of YT perfectly. If they can just flip push, make the most out of your relocate. They're going to snowball in to the pickup. There will be a charge back out from the Spirit Breaker. He cancelled himself, getting caught inside the shards. You'll get a call over on the Anti Mage. But the problem you've got is they'll find him. No TP out with a Mana Void. Rubik killing, securing. Uh, he actually told Empowering Haste this time. <laughs> but. They chase after the snowball. That's not going to reach anybody. Now, Are they gonna get no. now? yeah, they can. They're, like, what's going to stop them? You got nothing. Oh boy. That was like, they didn't need to go in at all. Right there, that was just. Uh... I don't even know what to say. Well, oh, Dark Sea out, going to back him up. As he managed to find himself an anti mage. The problem is. Anyway, just still happy enough to fight him up here. Now they actually back over again. It was Rubik who stole, pulling him up, and Meshi drives Lashrak up on the cliff side. Tiny will bring down the Rubik for his insolence, while the Lashrak cold embrace with a shackle. It transcends vertical limits. The Illuminum will fly in too. Lashrak is down. The snowball comes through. He didn't actually take. Actually, no, he did. He took the enemies with him as he went over the hillside. And Tiny will get a good avalanche. They're focus firing. Now blinding light. He can't hit Jack. And Tiny is going to get slapped back down again. 
Roshan ended up going down right there. I actually missed who he went down to, but the AGC model is in the hand of Monkey, so I'm assuming it went to Root. The Shackle is lined up. Support's coming in from the anime. He's going to burn up a little bit of the mana, and he goes for a short-range charge. But he's still away to safety nonetheless. But Tiny is down for 50 seconds. That's a long death time. Oh boy. It all started with a Spirit Breaker charge mid, and there was no backup there, so why even make the charge play? It's just. And then they shouldn't have even tried to save the Spirit Breaker with all their heroes. They should have just let them die. <laughs> Here they come. Spirit Breaker. Here's a mad cow. They go for the shackle. It won't latch, however. But the blink and walrus punch. They catch the track out. No mana style. Instead, just the BKB, but the curse down on the sidelines again. That's a hundred second cooldown with yeah, they can't find the combo. The spirit breaker charges in. Then the tiny thinks he may have a blink or something. Or the dark seer thinks he might have something, but by that point, the winter's curse has already been thrown out. He didn't actually use anything! Oh no! Alright, this is Oh you no spirit breaker! You just gave away curse! You don't charge into a team where you just gave away curse! <laughs> oh. Run away. Run away. Oh, I think I've soiled my armor. <laughs> YT's in a lot of trouble. At least they're gonna get rid of that observer wall which got planted up on top of the hill, but... Eh. It's a level 11 Rubik too, so that's a level 2 ultimate. They're gonna hold on to Curse for a while. He's got Glimmer Cape to get himself in position. Someone's gonna TP towards the top lane, and then Keeper of the Light will pull him back in. But yeah, there goes there goes so your anime. Mate. Hmm? You were looking so good too, and then all of a sudden the last like three minutes they're collapsing. Um It's just it's just not their time. It it, it it happens to a lot of teams. Sometimes things just go wrong. And in this case, it went seriously wrong. They get a BKB on all a track, and he really is like the guiding light. For Team YT. He has the highest net worth for his team. The issue they have is they just can't land any combos for all the money they've got and all the abilities they've got, they're just not achieving anything. And they're kind of scared to go high ground, at least though, now. Like we were talking about, it's really hard to go high ground against this lineup, so what they're doing right now is they're split, splitting it up. Anti Mage top and the other four bottom. Fight breaks out, either. They take the Rax's bottom or top, or they can even recall the anti There's so many little things that they can do, and this is a great play from Root right now. Root Breaker, please drop your stout shield to actually hold on to that Orb of Venom. <laughs> Orb of Venom is a critical item for SBs. He's left it just sitting back in base. Like, uh, I don't want it. Like, what, what would you want? An Orb of Venom which gives you slow and extra damage, or a stout shield after you've already got a solar crest? They're charging in Wind Ranger. BKB will pop, but also the Animate. Where is that curse? Well, okay, it doesn't exist except in the hands of Rubik. They're all on top. He needs to get this curse off. He does. It's on the Dark Sea. He's going to get pounded down, and they go in deeper. Now with the Animate on the front lines. Oh, a wow. Void spills out the damage. Tiny will toss him back to make more copies of the Animate. But this right now is piracy inside the YP base. Tiny is trying to beat down the Wind Ranger. Successful at doing so, but you even get the Spirit Breaker getting stunned up, and that'll be enough for Monkey. No Keeper of the Light steals the Ultra Kill from him. The bottom rank is, however, forfeit, and this really is GG. There is no comeback from this. I thought I thought Rubik wasn't even going to get off the curse during that team fight. I was like, come on, Rubik, cast it, cast it. He finally got it off. Oh no, that mana void made my children in the future. Uh, good game. Good game. I think we've completely uh, exhausted the puns as uh, right. we have we have finished game number one. But it's not over yet, boys and girls. We shall return for game number two of this best of three for the ESL1 New York qualifiers. Who will represent America? over at ESL1 New York at a landmark place. It's over at Madison Square Gardens Theatre. You definitely want to be there, so if you're going to be anywhere near New York, and if, even if you're not going to be anywhere near New York, get yourself near New York in a couple of weeks' time when we will travel there. You can buy yourself the tickets. There's a whole bunch of codes. You can get 10% off your tickets as well. Use the Join Dota one. It's awesome! Uh, and have a great old time. We'll see you guys back
in a moment. Game two.